So you're thinking about getting this Tesla full self-driving package. There's a few things you should think about. One, it keeps on getting more expensive. Right now it's 10,600 Canadian or 8,000 US. And Tesla keeps on improving it. So it is getting better over time. Also, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it for you? Because I think the answer might be surprising. I'm Ryan from Rocky Mountain Tesla. And today we're going to try to explain what reasons you might actually want to get this package for and what reasons you wouldn't. The features cost a lot and it partly becomes a question of whether it will ever be available as a full self-driving solution. You could theoretically save a lot of lives if this ever does become reality. The thing is, this is nowhere near reality right now. You keep hearing that Tesla is going to keep on raising the prices, and they have twice since I bought this car in September of 2019. Following that argument, you should spend the money now so that you can save later. But should you? And I think it's more about the kind of person you are. First off, even though the features keep on improving, I still have heard a lot of complaints from passengers, mostly because of phantom braking. And it's a real problem, and it's something that actually kind of ticks my wife off, and any passengers, and my dog, especially when he's thrown to the floor because it is such a hard reaction. So there are issues with it. I can honestly say it's a feature that not everyone will want to pay for. But there are some. What kind of person? Well, I'm an early adopter. I adopt new technologies. I enjoy testing new technologies and seeing the benefits and also the disadvantages. Uh, it's something that comes naturally to me. And I'm also very hyper vigilant when I'm using these features. I think I just heard my wife saying I'm always hyper vigilant. It really seems to me that the March of the Nines, or this consistent, continual progress towards becoming uh, a consistent and useful feature, or set of features, is going to take a lot of time. And it's not going to come even in the near term. I don't see it coming in the next few years. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, it could be next year and all of a sudden all these features are working out great. Uh, but when we hit bad weather and we hit um, bad roads, it, things start falling apart pretty quickly. And the features that work really well, like keeping in the lane on the highway, work great. They are probably that 99.99 something percentage of accuracy. And you already get that with autopilot, something that you would probably pay money for in another uh, manufacturer, like a BMW, you actually have to pay a couple thousand dollars or something like that more to get those features and you get that for free with autopilot then there's these features like driving through traffic lights or stopping at traffic lights stopping at stop signs those features those are the features that well they're not really working and they're kind of at the beginning so that is something that you're not necessarily paying for working you're paying to see how they're progressing. Just speaking to the reliability of some of these features, just look at this one example here where it's actually looking like there is a stop. What stop? I don't see a stop. So uh, that even happened after the re more recent upgrade. So you'd think would some of these things get more stable? They don't necessarily. They take a long time for all of the data to come through and for the algorithms to get smarter. And that is just something that's going to take time. This is a good example of seeing how it is actually working and stopping at a stoplight. And this is the first case of seeing how well it can work. Now there is one feature that I absolutely would pay money for. And that is the automatic lane changes. That single feature is working really well, actually. It's, it's improved as well. It's gotten better. It's started moving into the lane faster. It's just like here in this example right here. That kind of feature actually reduces my stress level when I'm driving. At least it's that much safer when I'm switching lanes to know that 
I have actually reduced my chances of hitting someone in my blind spot. So if I can't use these features when I'm driving, uh, basically because I'm beta testing these features, I can't use them when I'm driving other people around. So when can I use them? Well, that's basically when I'm driving myself. So then I'm basically becoming a beta tester and I'm not getting paid for it. Hmm. If you're an early adopter like me, it's something you probably enjoy, seeing how these features are getting better and if you can afford it, because it is terribly expensive at this point. Uh, I would also say if you can't afford it, don't feel so bad because the car is already getting autopilot when you're getting it in the last little while at least. And that feature is amazing on the highways and all the other features, it's an amazing car to drive. So I don't think you'll miss out that much on the full self-driving features. Here's the thing that I think would make it far more feasible to buy the full self-driving package. And that is transferability. I've heard other people comment on it. I can't imagine paying this much money for it and not being able to transfer it to your next vehicle. Imagine you're getting a little older and your needs change. So the car you want in five to 10 years is going to be different. I think I will actually, we will actually be able to drive this car for a long time and I don't worry about losing these features because of that. So if it was transferable, it would make it a much easier pill to swallow. If you want to see another video uh, and see how this feature is actually improved from the beginning, take a look at this video I did here. And if you're interested in seeing how other people have experienced uh, going electric or are thinking about it, take a look at these this playlist down here.